Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week is part two of my chat with my buddy Jack. Now in part one, me and Jack spoke about Scotland, uh, motorbike collisions, um, hot air balloon duels, um, and a few other things. Uh, and towards the end, we sort of lightly touched on his heart condition. Well, at the start of this, we get much more into that. He has a heart condition called heart block. Um, we discussed that and going to sort of other pre-existing conditions and that sort of thing, and how he got, um, or how he was diagnosed with heart blocks, so all the details and stuff, it's a, it's a very interesting um, condition. We then get on to talking about loads of other things, uh, we talk about the technological revolution, climate change, veganism, fungi, consciousness, universal balance, ancient civilizations, uh, shamanic rituals, evolution, um, aliens, uh, and we also talk about our dads, as both of our, both of our dads have actually passed away. Um, so we, we talk about all that, it's, it's a very mixed bag, um, even when we speak about our dads, it's not for a huge long period of time, it's not really depressing uh, to either of us really, we just talk about it openly. So yeah, that's basically it for this episode and next episode. If you enjoyed the last one, you'll obviously enjoy this next one. Uh, if you, by the subject matter of the first one, you're not that interested, that's fine, but th this one is, is the better half of these two, um, even though, as I said, part one was fantastic, but you know, part two is uh, is better, I'd say. The, the conversation we have in this is wonderful. Now, that's pretty much all I've got to say, except, you know, make sure you like us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, you review us on iTunes if you get a moment, because it does really help out uh, the show, and it was really, really appreciated. Um, you can get in contact with us. I'll put all the details in the description of the uh, wherever you're listening to this. Um, and I'll be back at the end to talk about the next episode and a few other things I guess uh, I say I guess because I'm not sure if there is anything else I need to say apart from the next episode but still uh, yeah before the show gets started there'll be a quick promo um, and then we'll get right into it so thanks as always for tuning in guys and I'll be back at the end quiz time who's got four legs an opposable tail and fans all over the world it's Scooby Doo our favorite whipper join me and my guests on the meddling kids podcast for an irreverent review of Scooby Doo. It's family friendly, although there is occasional talk about hot villains. Join me, Julie Kin, every Monday on the Meddling Kids Podcast. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. And I'm your host, Mike Burton. Like I said, it's hard not to explain. Yeah, really, I can imagine it for any, long, anything but, internal is very yeah, hard to explain. Um, but the heartbeat after the skip, you feel that one. That kind of that hits you quite hard. It feels like somebody's punched your ribcage from the inside. Ooh, <laughs> they, can, they can be pretty savage. Some of them, they can properly throw you off. But most of the time, it doesn't really matter. Mm. But yeah, it's a, it can be a weird feeling when you're drifting off because when you when you're in that level of almost falling asleep mm. time seems to kind of slow down a bit yeah. so when you're like you say having maybe one heartbeat every two seconds and then yeah. you miss one your your heart's not beating for two seconds and yeah. when you're in that level of sleep where everything's slowed down as well it can fill up five seconds five six seconds so and that can cause a bit of panic sometimes so what with your heartbeat then can you because of obviously your heart condition are you very conscious can you always basically i can basically always feel it that's yeah because it's interesting because yeah. obviously there's certain things that people, um, obviously a lot of people understand this, but like with, for example, smells, yeah. people go, oh, when you go into a bathroom, it smells horrendous. Why is it after a couple of moments? It doesn't. It's like, because yeah. the smell's still there, your brain basically just yeah, first says, used to it. this isn't changing. Yeah. So, and that's a lot of what happens with heartbeats, one that people are going to normally yeah. be saying, but breathing. If you mention breathing, which I've just done now, we've been talking for an hour and yeah. I haven't thought about breathing at all. No, I haven't thought about it, but obviously And it's now happening. we're talking about it and now yeah. I'm thinking about it. I'm having Consciously to manually, having to, yeah, manually yeah, breathe yeah. and stuff. And so the brain does so many things that um, obviously... Just into most the subconscious. Your, yeah, because your subconscious is making all your organs work yeah. and stuff. Like the liver doesn't just do it. It, <laughs> it has to have a, a, a mind to get it to yeah. do stuff, but you obviously aren't conscious of that. So with the heartbeat, obviously I can't... If I stop right now, I can't even feel my heartbeat necessarily. Yeah. Like, if I put my hand there, you can. But, like, it's not... I can feel it at the moment. I can feel it in the right side of my neck, in my fingers, where I've got my kind of hand closed, in the back of my leg, and obviously in my chest. Mm. I'm just very conscious of where my heart rate is at yeah. all times. It's, it's like with me with breathing, it's not nowhere near bad at all, but I have, um, I have asthma. But yeah. only, like, it's hay fever asthma. So what happens is, if I am around loads of long-haired dogs for quite a long period of time, or I don't have uh, a lot of antihistamines... I have hay fever, I'm also allergic to dogs. But, um... <laughs> It's if I'm if I get ill like a cold or something I, because my immune system goes down a bit. Basically, yeah. it means my asthma gets worse. 
Um, it's quite annoying, really, because like I get a cold and then I get like a chesty cough and it's like breathing heavily and having to use my inhaler and stuff. It's never anything really, really bad. Uh, fortunately, I'm quite lucky in that regard. But that makes me more conscious of breathing. Yeah. You know, like um, I, I don't really smoke anymore, but like um, I used to smoke all the time in college. But like when I go drinking and have a you know have a fag or whatever yeah. like that, and it's like after sometimes I'll have one and then I'll immediately feel in my chest it's just yeah. tighter and yeah. I, I, whenever I smoke now it's I, I barely smoke at all if I'm being honest but it's like I'm so conscious of it now because it's always that little yeah. part in your mind and yeah. obviously with your heartbeat it must be yeah, that all the time very much the same yeah, if I accidentally consume caffeine which happened a few months ago I got essentially kind of spiked with a tea that wasn't decaf Right. Was that oh that messed me up something fierce that did yeah. so I didn't realise that the caffeine had happened mm. so I thought something really bad was happening and oh, had to okay. end up in hospital just to make sure everything was fine but yeah it's a so what obviously caffeine uh, speeds up the heart rate and obviously yeah. um... it just messes around with the electrical signals in my heart and it's, mm. um, it seems to put me I call it being in block right because it's hot block mm. and um, it seems to put me in block pretty bad and um, it was making me sweat profusely and. Uh, really just spinning out really bad quite a lot of chest pain as well mm. i get chest pain on a low level every day every single day for the past two and a quarter years yeah i've had some kind of chest pain i've got a little kind of niggling as it is now right and it's that's not concerning it's just mm. when it's when it changes when it's a bit different so occasionally yeah. i have like really bad chest pain and it's like that's fine yeah because yeah, it's like it doesn't affect me but when all the symptoms combine it's like mm. oh, something might be happening here yeah it's Cause... like um with, with my obviously once again I'm under my all my ailments are just like annoying and then never anything huge but yeah. it's like i have um i have eczema and i suffer yeah. with eczema every day and it's one of those things where it's like there's never a part it's not comparatively you know your thing's infinitely worse but like with me, I'm never 100 percent comfortable yeah. because there's always a part of me that is slightly itchy or stinging or yeah. uncomfortable. Like my face right now, uh, it looks generally fine, but I've actually yeah. got cream on it. You might be seeing the light is a bit reflective, and people often think I'm really sweaty, which is very <laughs> endearing. Thank you guys, but um, it's I always have to put some cream on my face, or it's so dry it will crack and eventually yeah. bleed. And like right now, um, I've got on my calf right like here, a little circle. I've got just a tiny bit of heat rash. It's probably about yeah. the size of 50p, but last hour i can just always feel it and it's a little bit of burning yeah. and it's it's not exactly the same thing obviously but it's like it's it, you have that uh obviously you probably have more than i do but like that uh the envy of people where they can just do for like a whole day they yeah. don't have to think about any part of their body no in a sense. just get up and go yeah whereas with me like I, i've obviously with the asthma thing sometimes i wake up and it's a bit chesty i have to take that sometimes yeah. i've got with the eczema it's oh, like, yeah when i wake up it takes me sometimes about three hours what? before i can think about getting ready for work well yeah obviously so i'll wake up at 10 i won't be out of the house until about three in the afternoon that's it's yes. just because like with, with your heart thing like if you don't want me asking what what either caused it or what kind of made um made, like mm. <laughs> that's a good question i'm not entirely sure um on both sides of my family on my mum's side and my father's side there's a little bit of kind of heart condition here and there mm. so it could be uh congenital yeah uh, kind of genetic yeah or it's uh acquired as they call it which is down to my terrible lifestyle back in the day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's probably half and half. Because yeah. my brother, on my mum's side, he had um, possibly the first degree heart block, the one that doesn't cause any symptoms. Okay. He went into hospital for something else. Mm. They took an ECG. Mm. They noticed it had this. It didn't affect him. Yeah. And uh, my cousin on my father's side, she's got something which um, isn't heart block. It's, um, never remember the name of it, because all these heart conditions have got some amazing names. Yeah. Um, but the slowing down of the heart rate is called bradycardia. Right. And the speeding up is called um, tachycardia. Mm. And what hers causes is tachycardia. So it's not a block, it's something else mm. to do with the uh, uh, the ventricles of the heart, I think. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not a heart expert, so no. or an expert in really anything, except Star Wars, maybe. <laughs> but uh, even then, not really. But um, yeah, so what is this going to be? Do they know much about it? Like, um, um, Yeah, well, they say it should go away over time. Oh, really? But, um doesn't feel like it is at the moment. So There's you... the possibility that I'll have to have a pacemaker. Okay. But at the moment, it seems all right. Because I've got, at the moment, an internal um, heart monitor, kind of an internal ECG machine. So just like... sends if... the data back to the hospital. Where I was going to say, yeah. So, yeah, they've never, they've never really found anything untoward on it. If they had, they would have paced me by now. So is it like... Um, so since, since it happened, since you were diagnosed with this two yeah. years and a, and a bit ago, have you had any major events? Was it like one big event that made then realise you've got it and then since then it's like, we'll keep an eye on you? Well, the day I realised I had it, that was 
probably some of the worst symptoms I've had. Mm. I was out in the new forest. It was about 10 o'clock at night, just coming back from a bit of a walk. Yeah. Got back to the car and uh, just started spinning out, sweating, chest pain, hard to breathe, everything, everything that kind of a heart attack shows. Mm. And uh, yeah, we started getting back towards Southampton. We had to stop off and kind of Lindhurst, get an ambulance. Mm. It took them roughly about a week and a half, two weeks to fully diagnose what was going on. Right. They kept switching between first degree or second degree heart block and couldn't figure out and then didn't really know what to do. And about six months after that, they put the, um, excuse me, <laughs> yeah, put the, um, the loop recorder, as it's called, in me to see what was going on. Right. And that's, that'll be in there for a while yet, I think. Yeah, so, and, and since then, have you, that, have you not really had many, obviously you had the, the caffeine thing when you were basically inadvertently spiked, um, yeah. but apart from um, that. Well, occasionally, I, I seem to, I seem to get kind of like, two, three months where I feel, okay in inverted commas mm. then i'll get a week maybe two where i'm just absolutely fucked yeah, <laughs> and yeah. there's probably one or two occasions of that where i'll consider going to hospital just to make sure everything's okay yeah. i was in hospital not too long ago because um as well as the heart block i've got um lesions in the white matter of my brain possible multiple sclerosis okay. so everything kind of mixing together you can't really tell what's going on yeah. so both of them caused me dizziness mm. and i didn't know which was kind of happening so Christ. i was in hospital for uh 15 straight hours of dizziness barely able to stand Fuck. upright stand still without kind of falling over all over the place that's there horrendous was, jesus yeah, there's no real kind of explanation for it went away went to work perfectly fine the next day felt perfectly fine it's just one of those things that's one of the kind of wi- brilliant and scary things about like, humans like, for yeah. example obviously i mentioned um, my dad passing me from cancer and stuff and cancers yeah. I don't need to go into that because everyone generally has a vague idea of cancer. And if you don't listen to the last episode of the podcast, <laughs> but um, the my my uncle, um, he was um, a year after Dad died. Yeah. Um, he died, but he didn't die of cancer. He died of a heart thing. But he yeah. he never knew he had a heart thing at all. No, he most made, people don't because yeah. he doesn't show symptoms until it happens. a lot of internal things that's one of the problems yeah. with a lot of internal cancers especially yeah. you, you can't there's no symptoms until no. it's too late or yeah. you know how many times I'm sure everyone gets this where you just walk down the street or you're at home suddenly and then you just get this random jabbing pain and you're like yeah. ow and then it's gone that? it's yeah. gone after like 10-15 yeah. seconds and then sometimes it never comes back and you're yeah. like I don't know what that was but okay <laughs> but that could I don't want to scare everyone yeah. but that could be like the start of cancer that could be yeah. a, a star of something and then it's so hard to know, but my uncle, he basically just, he got flu sort of symptoms, felt yeah. really shit, and then he went to hospital because of it, um, They and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him, and he was getting worse, and they're like, we'll put you under, we'll figure it out. Yeah. They put him under, didn't wake up. No. Because yeah, they, they opened him up, and they said his heart was so diseased yeah. that they were surprised he was actually alive, essentially. Yeah. No. Uh, it's human resilience. Myocarditis, no, pericarditis, or something along those lines, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fully sure yeah. at all. But it's just horrendous because obviously my family's starting to recover from you know dad passing and then yeah. everyone starts to recover happens. and then that and it's like, oh, yeah. fuck it. Especially my auntie, it was just who was my dad's sister as well. It yeah. like, but it, it's one of those things where it's just like humans, we're so resilient and so fragile at the same time. It's yeah. a real. You weird see some thing. people that they get thrown from cars at 60 mile an hour crashes, mm. stand up and walk away. Yeah. I mean, you only have to look at kind of motorcycle races. You see them go into a kind of brick wall, basically, and yeah. they get up, go back and make a cup of tea. You get other people and trip some people, over. They, they fall their own height, they just fall over. And that's it. And down they go. It's, it's, uh, it's horrendous. Say it's resilient and fragile at the same time. It, it's such a bizarre thing, isn't yeah. it? It's almost like, um, I say, it, it's almost like a, an egg wrapped in like. It looks like rubber. Yeah. Where it's just like, it's like a hardboard egg, but it's in rubber. And it's like, you could throw it, it could bounce a hundred times, but yeah. the no, that one time. wrong thing, yeah. and the insides are gone. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it is such a weird thing. And like a lot of, that would be something plays on my mind quite a lot, obviously, is because my dad died of cancer. His yeah. mum died of cancer when he was 20. Yeah. Six. So my yeah, cancer plays on my mind as well. Constantly we, yeah. check yourself to make sure there's nothing here, there, and everywhere. Well, that's the thing. It's like my on my mum's side, her dad has got prostate cancer, and yeah. then on my dad's side, obviously my dad and dad's mum, yeah. and my uncle John's got Barrett syndrome, which is like the, can be the starting things of like esophageal cancer, it's like little yeah. polyps and stuff on your esophagus and things like that. And it's like, you know, I know one in I think it's now the statistic is one in two males are um, apparently going to get cancer. Um, yeah. If if you I live like a, it is kind of 
one in two out of everyone will be affected in some way. Yeah, yeah. Cancer, if not directly. Uh, and it's things like that. And I think it's uh, one in three women. It's like, that's, I heard this from an oncologist on a podcast. Yeah. So I'm not. That, this the is cures one. nowadays are becoming so much better, though. Well, so that's what I mean. Like, you've you got to think. have to worry about it less and less. Well, yeah, I mean, there was a thing when me and Reese, me and Reese did this YouTube thing back when, in college. So I'm talking like seven years ago now, eight yeah. years ago. And it was called Visual Digest. It was really silly and stuff. But um, we'd occasionally look up the news. And one of the things that we saw in the news was it was the very starting stages of clinical trials for it was it was a little chip sort of thing, yeah. which it was a radiotherapy chip. So they put it in by the tumour and yeah. that emits radio like radiation. Yeah. So instead of having chemotherapy, which is, as Josh describes it, as a carpet bomb to your system, yeah. or radiotherapy... <laughs> yeah, old school is, chemos are definitely as fuck. Yeah. But modern day ones are very much targeted. It only just goes for those specific cells. Yeah, it's just getting better and better and better. Yeah. And it's like, even just the... The advancements in the last Cause there's 20 years two essentially kind of two different types of cell in mm. the body you've got kind of like fast growing ones and slow growing ones yeah and cancer is a fast growing one yeah unfortunately so is your hair and your fingernails yeah that's why that all falls out when you have the kind of old school chemo yeah the hair and the fingernails tend mm. to fall off and fall out yeah because it's the fast growing cells oh, so I see. all your slow growing ones all your bones and all your skin and all that it's basically yeah. fine but yeah cancer hair and fingernails because yeah. fingernails and hair are basically made out of the same thing it's kerosene isn't it I think so yeah Yeah, or yeah, kerosene uh, rather kerosene's yeah. gas kerosene yeah, that's a good point <laughs> yeah this was made out of gas I just set your fingernails on fire oh, yeah yeah so they're all fast growing cells which is why they get messed up so badly by kind of chemotherapies but yeah modern targeted ones go generally just for the actual cancer itself rather yeah. than wiping out the entire body's immune system well yeah but the obviously some of the issues come from where like what with my dad for example the esophageal cancer wasn't what killed him yeah. what happens is that's obviously central then that's yeah. malignant then that spreads and yeah. then that then attacked his lungs his liver his this and that and yeah. then it was everything else that got attacked from the esophageal cancer that yeah. caused him to die because it basically caused internal hemorrhaging and it's like with that yeah, it spreads I think everywhere in my dad as well it was yeah like liver Kidneys, lung, I think, and the bones as well. Yeah, it, start, it well. just starts getting yeah, everywhere. It's really nasty. Because yeah. like when he was is... first diagnosed, I mean, he had cancer for 12 years. Oh, when 12? He was, yeah, 12 years. My dad had for 18 months. Yeah, when he was first diagnosed, he was only given, I think, about a year to live. Oh, two wow. Two years to live, something like that. Jesus. No, yeah, it was uh, no, two months, that was it. When he was first diagnosed, he was given two months to live. Fuck. Two years later, they gave him a year to live, and 10 years after that, it finally killed him. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he was, was he was he was ill a, the entire time, if you mind me asking? Yeah, he was uh, constantly had cancer. At no point was he clear of it. He right. was constantly kind of in the background, kind of going along, but he yeah, he fought that off <laughs> for the, pretty for hard. The, for the 10-year period um, in between, was it like a... Was it a case of he was... People would be able to tell that he was noticeably ill, or was it um, just you could because you knew him because he's a bit thinner and a bit more weak, and like, I don't know... Well, that's the thing. He didn't really get that much thinner in the kind of the beginning stages because when you first had chemo you used to kind of cycle to and from the general hospital to have chemo fucking and there hell. were so many people that would get taken home by ambulance yeah. after having the chemo and yeah Jesus he just Christ. used to get up the next day go to work my dad would um, my dad would drive yeah. um, and I think he I think he drove there and then would walk back or he'd yeah. get he'd, he'd, he'd drive a bus or something yeah, yeah. He, he would he would be fine funnily enough when he would uh, go to uh, chemotherapy and then he got a bit of radiotherapy because it affects different people in different ways well, yeah because really well cancer is different for everyone because yeah. all, all your cells are different all your genes yeah. and everything reacts differently it's madness and it depends what chemotherapy you're on once again because there's so many different types yeah it's, it's yeah, really for the yeah the first I think two courses of chemotherapy was on yeah or at least all three because he had in total I think he had seven mm. different courses of chemotherapy over the 12 years okay or maybe even eight yeah. I don't know it was half my life literally half my life because he was diagnosed when I was 12 and died when I was 24 so it's literally half my life so it's yeah. just kind of, it all kind of blurs into one yeah I can imagine memory. so yeah it's a yeah, cycling to and from. I find it hard enough bloody cycling to the hospital from where I live as it is. Yeah, <laughs> let alone after. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like um, with with my dad, it was um, I've said in the podcast at some point. I'm gonna, I'm planning or aiming to, if Rob will do it, is um, have an episode of my brother Rob and we'll just talk yeah. about dad. I'm planning maybe release on Father's Day or something like that. But yeah, so I'll go into more detail about this. Uh, in in all my podcasts, I do talk about it. Not, I don't choose to talk about it all of them, but if yeah. it comes up, I'll talk about it a little bit. But like um without going to, into ridiculous, ridiculous details, just like the first first year or so, he, he, people who knew him could tell. Yeah. But if he, you met him, it wouldn't be, oh, he's definitely ill. It's just yeah. not, not necessarily anything. It was just mainly the last six months where it just yeah. got worse. And then the last two months, he was just not himself. He's on so many yeah. painkillers, that sort of shit. Um, but it's it's like, it's, it's such a weird thing when, with like slow burn, like some people have asked me, um, would I have preferred of, say, 
when dad died, so the day he died, would yeah. I have preferred to not have known him be perfectly healthy in that day yeah. and just go yeah. or slow burn? And, and the problem is everyone's different and there's no right answer because yeah. me personally, if I would, it was going to die like that or I'd rather or have slow pain, I'd rather have the slower one, even though it's more painful because I get to say goodbye. And yeah. dad did at least... Like the last thing I ever said to Dad was I loved him. That yeah. the morning, the day he died, I, saw, I went to work, um, and that morning I spoke to him before I went to work and stuff. He told me he loved me. I told him I loved him. That sort of thing. Gave him a hug, uh, and then I never saw him alive again. Yeah. You know, it's it was very. It there's no regret there of what I didn't get to say to Dad, but yeah. obviously, and there's a weird thing of as time goes on, you get you get kind of. Not used to the idea of them dying because that's, you never quite get used to it. No, it's, not it, entirely. It's, just, it, it's a weird, you're kind of half yeah. used to it in a sense. You're like, you know, it, it almost feels surreal, like it's not happening. Yeah. You kind of like, it, it must. It's like when they when they actually die as well and they're gone. Like yeah. the first two days, it wasn't that bad necessarily for me. It was more the next days after that. So the yeah. first two days, it was a bit like it was almost like shock, and it was like it's almost like you just don't see them for a couple of days, which does sometimes happen yeah. when you go away for a weekend or they go away, whatever. But then it gets like a week or so, maybe, maybe a little less than that, and you're just a bit like, oh, fuck. And then it gets, it's then the next six months or so where it's yeah. just a bit like, my my thing with my dad was, because um, one of the reasons I'm into Star Wars so much stuff, he got me into Star Wars. Yeah. And this tattoo is actually, it's the prequels and the uh, original, Star Vader being the original, and I'm of the prequel generation. He's of yeah. the original generation. So it's a nice little homage to him without just being a rest in peace dad tattoo, which I haven't got a problem with anyone having, obviously, but yeah. me personally. And t- Dad wasn't that into tattoos either, ironically <laughs> enough. So I kind of, I like to think if, I don't necessarily believe in an afterlife, but I'd like to think if there is one, he'd just be there going, for fuck's sake, <laughs> like you're telling everyone like, there's tattoos for me, but you know I don't like them that much. Yeah. It just crack me up. But it was like, one of the, one of the things that people... People have asked me before when they've had friends who've been uh, friends whose parents are either are dying or have died, yeah. and they go, "What can we do?" And the answer is nothing and nothing. everything. Yeah, it's there is absolutely nothing anyone can do to make it better. Yeah, but there are things people can do to make Just it easier to live deal with. Your life as normally as you can. Yeah, yeah, and some people, when people, but with me, for example, when Dad passed away, I didn't want everyone to kind of pile on and be an uh, be an agony aunt sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. I was like. I want to just kind of keep on going. I did open up about it and I did talk about it. And obviously there's moments that you have or certain weeks where it just really hits you hard. But generally it's like, I just kind of want to push on, yeah. get through because there's everyone should grieve in a healthy way, but yeah. also you don't want to wallow too much because right. then it's like, well, they've lost a life and now you're losing your life yeah. to grieving. Obviously with my mum it's a different story because obviously it was a partner for life. And With parents, one of the sad truths about it is they're most likely going to die first. You yeah. know what I mean? You're probably going to see your parents die, which yeah. really sucks, but it's part of it. And when people ask me, what can you do? It's like, you just be there for your friends. There's not, there's no magic answer. There's there's yeah. nothing you can just say to be, you can, there's nothing you can do and everyone's different. It's, 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 it's such a weird thing because when people go through that and they ask me for advice and I'm just like, I, I wish I could tell you there's a magic cure or there's yeah. something you can do, but it's just... I would never wish this upon anyone, but in 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 sort of a nice way, it's really it grounded me in reality a lot, and it really made me look at mortality in, in a way, you know, because yeah. obviously I was nineteen, so it's just when I started becoming an adult, got a proper job, that sort of thing. It was yeah. just like kind of throws you into the real world that extra yeah, bit, exactly, you know. And then it was like things started to get better. Then my uncle Steve died, and it's just like yeah. okay, if I can kick me all up, we're down, sort of thing. And it's yeah, like, there was, I think it was ten and a half, eleven months. Between my dad dying, my heart condition starting. Oh fuck! So there was a, kind of just about got over that, and the, then this started. The ironic that. symmetry between our lives <laughs> yeah. in that way, where we both had our dads, they both yeah. had cancer, but mine was short lived, but yours yeah. was long lived, and then my uncle dying of a heart um, thing, but then yeah. you've got the heart it's, condition. It's quite yes. odd, isn't it? Yeah. And we're both connected by Justin. That's yeah. quite an interesting little uh, little thing, but um, yeah, it's a. Uh, well, it, it's weird to get out of this weird deep hole <laughs> in this podcast, <laughs> of, you know. But it, it's it's such a. It's such a surreal thing. I find that the thing that upsets me the most as I get older, apart from potentially having kids and him never be able to see them, which sucks, is the the things they'd like. That that's where it gets me. Where yeah. it's like the, with all the new Star Wars films coming out, Dad can't see them. You know, yeah. all the all these films. And now that I'm getting older, I'm into so much more music that he was into, sort of thing. Yeah. Like he was into Bo- uh, Bowie and um, or Bowie, which I mean, you'll say uh, Genesis, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, a lot of that stuff. But he likes Dream Theater and a lot of prog rock. Yeah. And I showed him a couple of bands as I was getting older that he was getting into a little bit more. And then it's like I find myself listening to um, 
oh fuck, I can't remember. It's completely escaped me now. But there's like um, there's a couple of songs I listened to. Oh, one of them was um, Jump Breakfast in America by Supertramp. And it's, oh, I've probably heard it. At some it's point. like take a look at my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah she's the one. only one I got. Da, 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 da. Uh, Jim Class Heroes did a cover of it with the singer Fallout Boy. Now I know he liked that song because I remember him playing it when yeah. I was younger. And I just randomly really got into that song like a month ago. Yeah. And it's one of those little things where it's just like, I just kind of wish you're about just so I can just tell you I'm into yeah. that song now. It's uh, it's a very strange thing, but uh, it the d- thing I know my dad would have liked the most out of recent developments is uh, SpaceX. Oh, landing, with, uh, you know, Musk landing the rock rockets. Yeah, having seen that would have been that would have been one of the best things for him. Yeah, he's into all of that kind of side of mm. science and all that. And that's where my interest in kind of quantum mechanics and all that stuff comes from. Is from him. Yeah, and he would have loved to be able to see that on the latest generation of telescopes that are coming out. Yeah, and all that. It's well, technology yeah. now is like well, I I feel bad. There's that. <clears throat> There's actually a word for it, which I've actually got written on my phone, so I'm going to find it in a second. But um, there's a there's a word for um, oh, my phone was actually on loudspeaker. It's a good thing I'm really unpopular, isn't it? Because yeah. nothing like literally has like over an hour and not a single person, no email, no one has fucking contacted me. Thanks, guys. Um, but there's there's a word um, which I'm stalling while I'm trying to find it. Um, it's basically the the regret that when you die, you're not going to be able to see what everything's going to be you know, yeah. like with te- technology especially like you go back 200 years ago before um, electricity because obviously I think electricity was the late 1800s sort of the yeah. West became they, more mainstream sort yeah, of thing they kind of fooled around with it in the kind of 16th and 17th century yeah bit, but it's like um, no light bulbs or anything like that yeah yeah so it, it's just like you where, where we are now because we're in uh, I don't know if this is a term. I imagine I haven't coined this term. I haven't heard anyone else necessarily say it, but I don't think I've invented the term. But yeah. technological revolution. Yeah. Well, see, the industrial revolution was a while ago, so I'd only assume that logically we're in the technological revolution. Yeah. Whereas, like, technology has progressed so quickly in just, if we say 30 years, you go back to 1988. Yeah. The internet, I don't, I think the no, 90s internet, was nine, the yeah, 90s. early 90s. Four, like yeah, six, and it was like, but there. even then, barely anyone really had it. It was just no. like forums, essentially, yeah. not really anything else. And then, obviously, only really the last ten years or so, smartphones have been a thing. Yeah, and since that's, that's happened, it's completely yeah. fucking changed <laughs> the game. Revolutionized everything. Everything. It's yeah. like I literally have a- access to every piece of information ever in my pocket. Yeah, and it's like, right how much further is it going to go with VR, all that sort of stuff? Is the amount of shit we're going to see over the next 50, 60 hopefully seventy years if we live that long yeah. is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, but it's that regret of. I'm not never, seeing that extra step. Yeah, it's. I've always wanted to. That's always been my my thing with. Um, yeah, this is it. It's called. Um, I should remember this because it makes sense. Uh, ellipsism, and it's. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's a sadness that you'll never know how history will turn out. Yeah. Because I just I just love to know how technology goes, what humans do, and all these sorts of things. I'm just so intrigued. Weirdly, one of the things that went through my mind when my heart condition started was like. Don't let this kill me before Game of Thrones ends. <laughs> I want to see how this finishes. I, I say that with Star Wars. Yeah. I literally say to people, I was like, right, if I die after Star Wars Episode Nine, yeah, I, I, that wouldn't be too bad. I just need to know before they start another fucking saga and stuff. I was like, if I die after Nine, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> just let me let me get to the end of this. Yeah, this just and Vikings, let me have this. That's all I want. That's Come on, yeah, done. yeah, that's it. It's um, yeah, because technology's just. They're talking about obviously with Elon Musk is a fucking genius. And he's yeah. um, changing. He I'm a real life Bond villain. Well, that's what everyone's been saying. It's like we really hope he's a good guy because yeah. if he's not, we are fucked. <laughs> Fuck, we are so screwed. Yeah. Um, and he's just like he he's he's got all the right answers, which makes us worry a little bit. But it's like he wants to colonize Mars and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's a brilliant, beautiful. It idea. needs to happen at some point because we are raping this planet to death we are we're, very quickly we're we need it. to it's... we need to learn how to travel to other systems with yeah. some well, kind of speed and haste what's just like with the climate change thing and people arguing about it and it's just like well, climate change isn't entirely man-made it happens every hundred thousand five hundred thousand years it's just we are accelerating the process yeah profoundly so wildlife plant life all of this can't adapt to it mm. so it's going to be less likely to recover once that climate cycle comes back around again. Precisely, yeah. Well, if we go into kind of an ice age, because global warming, there is a problem I have with that phrase. Not everywhere gets warmer. Exactly. Bits get warmer, bits get colder. It's mm. just... It fucks with the whole uh, yeah. the ecological system anyway, yeah. because that's... So I think it was last summer, parts of Africa or parts of the Middle East hit over 50 degrees. 
humans can't exist. In Jesus that. We can fuck. kind of exist in minus 50, but 50 degrees Celsius. Yeah, you well, can't live there. People had to migrate away from where they were living because it got too hot. Oh, God, yeah. Well, yeah. 30 is like a comfortable hot, and then well, when it gets... No. Well, not for you, <laughs> not for you but like, when people go on holiday and they want to go to Spain or yeah. anywhere, like, they go, 30 is like... That's as hot as you want, this yeah. sort of thing. That's like a proper hot day. I don't want any hot on this. It was about thirteen degrees today. It was too warm. <laughs> it, it's it's with with climate change stuff. One of the things I was talking to my mate Wayne about. We did an episode on paleontology because he's yeah. a paleontologist, and um, we talk about climate change. And one of the things is uh, with, for example, a good example is just turtles. Is um, they the gender of their eggs, or their babies, it depends the eggs, on, on temperature. temperature yeah. yeah. So if you have it either getting too cold or too hot because yeah. of what we've There's done. There's an imbalance of male to female. And then it whole fucks up, the up them. Yeah. And then because it fucks them up, it fucks up everything they interact yeah. with and all. And it's just a big ripple Other effect. parts of the food chain and all Exactly. This. Yeah. And it's just like, one of the things that um, I remember, it must be about 10, 15 years ago, I think it was around the time the Al Gore uh, documentary came out. There was a little comic in a newspaper and I think it was, it's quite popular. I think you could easily find it online because it was huge. And it was, um, it was someone at like a, a cartoon people and it was like a seminar someone holding up saying global warming's bad yeah. and someone stood up and said like um what if we um reduce what if we start recycling reduce uh, emissions make the air cleaner and we don't save the world it's like <laughs> well look at you still even if th- we're not actually going to destroy the world think about all the benefits like yeah. my, my dad always said um my dad was an incredibly intelligent man uh, much more intelligent than i am but so uh, probably than i'll ever be but it's like he he was very sceptical about a lot of things. And yeah. he always said about climate change and global warming, he was like, he's like, I don't know fully enough about it to comment, but he was like, I know for a fact that pumping all this smoke in the air yeah, at least can't help. be good. No. Like, <laughs> maybe it's not doing any bad, yeah. maybe, but it's definitely not doing good. No. And by that logic, you should think, well, if something at the best is going to be neutral, yeah. should you really do it? Mm. Something you've got to think about when you say, as you get older, and you try not to say, as, or I try not, one that tries not to say as many douchey things to people and upset them. Every now and then, that's one of the things I like about social media. I get to type something and go, well, let's just let's yeah. just delete that and <laughs> reword that slightly. Um, where it's like, sometimes when I was younger, you, I just argue with people say things and you kind of have to get to a point where, obviously I don't do it all the time because no, I'm not perfect, but like you get to a point where it's like, if I say this, either everything's going to be the exact same or really bad, like I'm going to really upset someone. So yeah. maybe, maybe I should just take it down a notch or two but climate things like that and climate change and everyone's like there's general pollution you've got to worry about kind of polluting the seas that's the, the sea, I was going to say with the plastics people shit. think that um, the main producer of oxygen is trees mm. it's not it's um, oh it's not plankton it's the other one krill uh, um, no um, oh, oh, is this the micro is this like the microscopic um, it's, oh god I think I actually <laughs> algae I, that's it algae, algae yes, yeah. yes 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 it's about 60% of oxygen on the planet is produced by algae mm. and we're absolutely fucking it up with like microplastic in the oceans and all that just completely no, like microbeads and shit yeah the microbeads yeah. and all that <gasps> so yeah it's, uh, we need to look after the oceans a lot more than we already are mm. And uh, obviously the land as well, because we live on it. <laughs> <laughs> I want some kind of water world society just yet. So. Yeah, not quite. Maybe if we uh, develop gills or something, it'll yeah. be worth it. Which, it's, it's just so upsetting when you see... Well, with people... We're so weird. We, we like to make excuses for so many strange things. Like For yeah. example, I'm pretty sure most people in the Western world agree that what they do in... Um, in China is horrendous with the uh, it's China where they do the dog festival where they kill the dogs and eat them and that sort of thing um, or do you not know about that? no <laughs> okay well there's a festival in it's either it's somewhere in Asia I think it's China yeah. um, where they basically kill dogs and eat them yeah. like, it's only because we have them as pets yeah and it's like I don't with this scenario, it's slightly different because what they do is, in some cases, they skin the animal while yeah. it's still alive. But going back to our thing of globalisation earlier, that's becoming less common now because yeah. more people in that kind of part of the area, part of the world, are having dogs as pets. Yeah, exactly. And obviously, the thing is, what I always think about it is um, with pigs. Like Pigs are, I think, more intelligent than most dogs, and yeah. we kill them. Obviously, we don't necessarily skin them, but obviously a lot of the fucking no. uh, factory farming and stuff that we do is absolutely horrendous for them. Yeah. But it's like, we need to just... One of the things that annoys me about certain people, I don't, I'm not annoyed by vegans, but there are a few vegans that do annoy me. But um, people who are like pro or well, not for or against the idea of climate yeah. change, or this, everyone wants to be so hard on their point. Yeah. They want to be 
we need to fundamentalism yeah. in any way exactly. it's not good you, it, know, it, you have to kind of in religion it doesn't work yeah. in capitalism it doesn't work no. in socialism and communism it doesn't work it's no. like we have to have a mix of everything just like we have to have a mix of culture we have to have a mix of everything put together culminates and makes something good you, you have to have it where yeah okay we don't want to have all these dogs killed but also we don't want to have factory farm pigs so yeah. let's remove factory farming completely yeah. let's Put more money into the stem cell burgers and stuff, which are sort of happening more and more, and it's yeah. getting cheaper to make. Um, where hopefully we'll be able to have lab-grown meat, and then hopefully if it doesn't turn everyone into zombies, then <laughs> we'll um we'll have to, we'll have to kill as many animals with that sort of thing. And we'll have to start eating bugs. Well, that's the thing because they're <laughs> going to be like people say like if we actually pound change... for pounds, uh, I think uh, bugs generally have kind of like eight times as much protein as beef does. Yeah, I've and heard obviously them. to grow the same weight yeah. of bugs to cow mm. is obviously so much better for the planet because you don't have to clear off all the forests and start well, yeah. turning it into fields precisely you can have like amount of methane height. that's producing you got to think like height wise you can just have like forests going yeah. uh, going up and have so many bugs it's, obviously people are very squeamish when it comes to bugs and stuff yeah. it's like so you, I've seen in places in Africa and stuff like that they just kind of turn them into burgers just yeah. crush them down so much that it just looks like a standard burger yeah like pate and, and puree yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah nobody really will tell the difference oh, you put a bit of flavouring in it it's just going to taste just like McDonald's yeah exactly <laughs> it's, it's not we're getting so good with food now like you get those um, a lot of the vegetarians and vegan stuff yeah all the get. corn stuff that's all so micro that's really, protein yeah which is essentially mould mm. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's fine so, it's so it's really good, good actually yeah. like I've had, um, I've had I've had like two or three different vegetarian sausages and one of them was alright but one of them was really good Yeah, and I've had um I had those, chi- you know, the chicken nuggets that aren't chicken nuggets. Yeah. Um, they actually, they don't taste quite as good as chicken nuggets. They taste kind of like a cheap chicken nugget. Just put enough ketchup on it, you won't know well, the difference. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. If you say, I'm not, I eat vegan burgers, not beef burgers, but I have um, the vegan bean burgers, you know, where it's yeah. like, because um, Tesco got this whole new vegan range and I've been trying to, I mean, every time I go in Tesco, I'll buy a new thing, so I'd give it a go. And these vegan burgers are fucking amazing. They're, um, yeah, it's, it's basically just refried beans yeah. essentially with a bit of sweet corn and the kidney beans and spice in them it's Mexican and it's in breadcrumbs yeah. and it tastes amazing and yeah. I, I now have one of them with a beef burger yeah. in fact that's what I had for uh, dinner uh, when well, no, I had a chicken last night I had uh, a bit of chicken and a vegan burger but no bun or anything because yeah. of the carbs and stuff so and loads of veg it's like if, if everyone was just like I'm not saying no one should be vegan but if everyone who's a meat eater was a bit more meat conscious yeah. then if everyone who ate meat ate twenty percent less meat, that would be such a huge, massive thing. Yeah. But the problem is, the vegans are like everyone should stop, and then all the meat is like, "Fuck you, I'm gonna eat everything I want." And it's, it's just like vegans you see that try and feed lions and tigers entirely on vegan tofu food and shit. It's yeah, like, oh, so God's sake! So they don't have the, the biology no. for that. Yeah, you don't understand evolution yeah. entirely. Do you? It's even like in, like I'm fine with people on a vegan diet, but vegans can't just have a vegan diet yeah. nine times out of ten some can because obviously everyone's body's slightly different but yeah. almost every single vegan has to take vitamin b supplements yeah. because apart from apart from food that's had it artificially put in specifically for it yeah i remember looking up online because um, me a friend of mine was having we're having a debate with a with a vegan and we were talking about this and the vegan was saying you can get foods that have got it in and my friend was saying you can't and the answer was actually they're both right where you can but it's yeah. put in artificially yeah. there's a couple of foods that are vegan friendly but they're quite obscure we things you have to have such a high amount of them it's much easier for people just to take b supplements yeah but obviously i ain't got a problem with that but if you have to take a supplement to live on a diet yeah that is natural yeah. it's it's i understand that humans are omnivores yeah, yeah. we have yeah you know, we have these sharp teeth and people go yeah that's not for you meat that's for cracking nuts so, yeah i know that but we have that there's not one use yeah. we, we we have a variety of things you know it, it's if everyone's just so the whole thing with uh, a common theme in this podcast I found is just balance yeah. it's just I've had I've had a couple of Christians on um, and I've had one where we were just talking about religion I said I don't got a problem with religion necessarily no. I've got a problem with organised religion telling yeah. people how to live their lives and the forcing... individual following religion is okay but on mass it can be dangerous <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a religious person uh, in real life who's actually like a horrendous person due to their religion um... I'm not saying I'm not saying there aren't any I think I might have met one actually yeah but I've met like I've met at least five people I know who yeah. are Christians who either they never really bring it up or mention There's it. There's this old couple preaching. in town that are um, Christians and they go around trying to convert everyone. Yeah. And I often have quite a good conversation with them. I yeah. don't mind them. They're kind of essentially harmless. Yeah. But so they try and use evolution to because the, they're kind of that science Christianity. Yeah, yeah. And they my, try my and use evolution like well. to peddle their ways. But well, my yeah, paleontologist like, friend, he's a, he's a paleontologist and he's a Christian. Yeah. Which fair fair play to you. Yeah. I, I've got the idea of I don't know. 
I used to think I knew because I was a teenager and I used to think I knew everything. But yeah. it's like, no one knows what happens when you die. No. Right? We can only try and guess. Yeah. What we know for absolute fact is we have one life. Yeah. We might have more. Yeah. We might transcend to other dimensions. We might go to heaven. We might go to hell. We might go to some sort of, yeah, other dimensions like an interstellar. Or, or something along those lines. It, well, yeah, yeah. You, you have no idea. You don't know what happens to the consciousness. We don't even yeah. know what consciousness actually is. We don't know if it's... basically in the worlds of kind of science and quantum mechanics is that energy, information, information cannot be lost. Yeah. It's only, only transferred. Yeah. So God knows where that goes. Exactly. Actually, if it's eaten down and spread out that way but mm. then the I've... consciousness the kind of the question of the soul mm. and all that if that's solid information where does that go exactly so you never really know and I've thought about that before but I just don't personally believe in a bearded man in the sky no I don't believe <laughs> that either I like to believe in I, I, when I say I like to believe this I, I, I don't know what I fully believe in in the whole thing because as I get older I become a bit more muddled with it all um, which is kind of nice sometimes to not think I know everything um, but the the idea of consciousness, I like to think there's a universal consciousness and yeah. everything alive in the universe is connected in some way, being yeah. planets as well as the sun, everything. There's okay. It essentially is under quantum mechanics, to be honest. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think everything on Earth is connected by a deeper level of consciousness, from yeah. localised consciousness, and then species consciousness, and this sort of thing. And it's like, when you go in the forest and you you can feel the difference with trees that are alive and fungus and all these sorts yeah. of things and they do have a degree of consciousness you get you get plants who scream when you cut them or when you get ones which uh, communicate with each other these really complicated networks yeah. that are very that's, similar that's to neurons with like fungi and mushrooms and all oh, that fungi the communication and go through that madness yeah, yeah. The, the amount they communicate is just There's insane. Some of them, I think, we've found they're about 6,000 years old. Yeah. The entire kind of spore. Colonies are almost. Covering, yeah, kind of almost yeah. the entire forest. Well, they say, like, uh, fungus is actually... Without fungus, there would be no life on Earth because mm. they basically spread everything. Yeah. It, 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 well, for water, land, everything like that. It's just... It's universal. It's, it's combined. It's like... Fungus is, like, more closely related to, org- like, life organisms and yeah. animals than it is to plants. Yeah. But it's, like, a weird in-between thing. And it's, like... With that whole like idea, sea sponges or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you, when you start delving deep into some of these things that fungi can do or fungi, depending on who you talk to, it's it's insane. And trying to think think that like we're when you go to a forest, I always find that I I, I you can feel the life. You know, yeah. not just obviously you can hear some of the birds, but even if it's silent, almost you can feel the difference because yeah. of the trees and that sort of thing. And it's like if there's just a vague degree of almost consciousness understanding between us and other things and it's like well why why is that a thing i mean obviously some people think it's some sort of deity and i personally don't believe there's like a hierarchical system of there's a deity and everything else because i think that deity must have been created or something or what's keeping it power in check and there's too many questions but i think if every single thing is even and it's just the universe came out of something that was smaller than a pinprick and it just explodes and expands infinitely essentially and then it gets to a point potentially where it stops yeah. and it goes back inward collapses in yeah, itself and then it just goes whoop and then all the energy kind of gets muddled around and yeah. redistributed and spat out again and that's just the infinite part of the universe and that's all that space time really is is just that kind of almost like a loop of that sort of yeah. thing and if that, it is just the one universe and not a multi universe theory I know multiverse theory is yeah. crazy where it's like the bubbles. every bubbles the bubbles of universes oh yes yeah because yeah. there's um, on the um, uh, background radiation image of the big bang yeah there's um there's a spot in the top right hand corner, I think. Right. Which looks as though it's something's kind of like hit it. Right. It's possibly where two universes have collided. Oh wow. Kind of the bubbles. And it's possibly one of the universes hitting that part that has caused that kind of change in temperature. Oh wow. There, where two of them Yeah, so it's it's a lot of stuff like that. So well, it yeah, might be with multiverse multiple... th- well, multiverse theory, like when you say it to certain people, people are just like, that's ridiculous. But it's like, yeah. if you actually look into it, there's a lot of credible scientists and a yeah. lot of research that goes into, this really could be a thing. Like, we yeah. don't understand quantum mechanics. No. or Because we can only see so far, light has only travelled so far since the Big Bang. Mm. Big Bang happened 13.6 billion years ago, whenever it was. Yeah. So light has only been travelling for that long. That's how far out we can see. Exactly. It's, it's further out than that. So we can't yeah. see the edge, in inverted commas, mm. of what is going on. Yeah. It's also with, uh, with obviously, the, like the light years away of things. Like yeah. when you're looking at something, it's it's how quickly. Like when, one example. Because if you look easy. at stars now, that yeah. star is not how we see it. That's no. how it was 
back then. Was the sun, I think, is eight minutes. Yeah, seven is. or eight minutes away. Yeah. So, so if the, the sun explodes... When we see it now, yeah. If the sun exploded this very second, I mean, it's dark now, so it doesn't matter. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if the sun exploded right now, you wouldn't see it until we imploded. Well, yeah, we, we'd get... Uh, uh, if we just say somehow the Earth was completely protected, the yeah. light wouldn't go out for eight minutes. Yeah. And it's just like... And you think about how far stars are and that sort of thing. Yeah. And that's one... There's a, there's a guy called Lawrence Krauss, um, who's a physicist i believe and um he's when he taught he's just so clever it's just it makes me feel like such an idiot but um he's on a, a podcast with joe rogan and they talk about this he says the universe isn't necessarily expanding to our knowledge it's just we can only see as far as yeah. light will let us see as well as the, the amount of time it takes well, for light thing, to come back the universe isn't necessarily expanding kind of outwards growing outwards it's mm. growing at every point yeah so if you've got three stars in a kind of triangle yeah. the distance between those three points is expanding yeah so we are getting further away from everything else so essentially uh, very slowly obviously we're essentially getting further away from the sun mm. and yeah. the sun to its neighboring star mm. and our galaxy to neighboring galaxies yeah and it's not that we're in this kind of set position even though everything's rotating yeah and uh, something new is growing on the outside it's the entirety of because the Big Bang didn't happen over there or over there or over there. Yeah. It happened everywhere Yeah, at the same time. Everything was in that one point mm. and it's blown out. If you put flour in a balloon and blew it up, yeah. that's basically the kind of the universe. Everything is in there. And as yeah. the balloon grows, every, the space between all the particles of flour gets bigger and bigger. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. It's uh, it's crazy when you start getting into sort of uh, all the... All the details, like especially when you figure out... When I've, you... I saw my father make people cry talking about the universe. Really? Yeah, honestly. Well, it's, it's like <laughs> he just a, couldn't handle it. One of the things is like um, dark matter, for example. I watched this um, right. Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> thing on it, um, and he was talking about dark... Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson was on a podcast, yeah. and he was like, he was like, a po- we don't actually... Dark matter um, isn't actually a thing, because, well, first of all, it is... We can't see it. We, we don't it know... Help. Yeah, we just know that this thing exists, there. and it and something happens... Mathematically, something is there. Yeah, we and can't something see happens it. We're not because of it. not sure what it is. Yeah. If and it's opposite particles to ours... Yeah, exactly. And no it idea. makes up, like, I think, 70 or 90% of the universe is something ridiculous. Yeah. It's like a really high majority. Yeah. And also, he says it shouldn't even be called dark matter, because we don't even know if it is matter. Yeah. We don't actually know what it is at all. Uh, dark and, matter or dark energy is yeah. they tend to be the two kind of terms for it. Yeah, we know nothing about it. I saw right. something in the news recently. They uh, they saw a galaxy that apparently has no dark matter in it, which is entirely... I don't entirely understand it. I haven't <laughs> looked into it. I should have done on yours coming on here. I should have researched it a bit better. <laughs> you try, but, you try yeah, to look into these things. It's just an, like... entire, an entire galaxy that's got no kind of dark matter in it or around it. Mm. And that's unique yeah. in, in the galaxy. And everything just changes our understanding of the universe. Yeah. Like, I just got, I've, I say this in the podcast all the time and I'm hoping it'll catch on to the few people that listen. But like, sorry for everyone who's listened. But this idea of, you can use this analogy in almost every part of life because of just humans not knowing stuff is the way it is simultaneously as when you're like a teenager also our understanding of science right it's like you've got a kid and they can see through the keyhole yeah and you're looking through the keyhole and you think you know everything in the room yeah and then when you become say a teenager or where we are now with science someone opens the door you don't go in the room but someone opens the door and then you realize holy fuck, I knew nothing. Yeah. And that's what it's like when you become an adult, in a sense, because you realise everything you thought you knew, you thought you knew everything about this one point, and then you open it. Not only is that point that you looked at completely wrong, yeah. but everything else around it. Yeah. And, why, and it's de- causally affects everything around it. Oh, well. yeah. And the way I described it with Wayne on the podcast about uh, science is almost like the door is on the edge of a cliff, as in at the bottom of a cliff. And you, yeah. op- you, f- you look in this little keyhole, you can see like a little dot, you open it up and it's so vast and huge and every single spot is something different. Yeah. Everything. And you're like, we... That's one of the things about religion that gets to me when people are closed off about religion. Fortunately, everyone I know who's uh, religious is generally quite... They believe there's a god, a deity, potentially an afterlife, but they believe in science and the Big Bang, which is yeah. fair enough. But there are some people who are like, religion... One of the ways they seem to go against science is they go, science thinks it knows everything. It's like, if you talk to anyone remotely scientific, you know it's the opposite. It's like, we know absolutely fucking nothing. That's the Darabian Darabian quote. He goes on about, well, science knows it doesn't know everything, otherwise it would stop. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. That's that's so true. And it's like, all we can do with science is disprove stuff. Yeah. We can never prove it. No, we can can just try and disprove everything else it could potentially be. But, you know, we could find out. Disprove what you can or whatever remains is probably right. Yeah, it's like 
until proven otherwise. Yeah. It's like the argument that, for example, um, we only we with gravity, for example, we've got the theory of gravity, everything yeah. we've tested with that we think is correct. Tomorrow, for we know, a whole new theory could come out which yeah. could completely disprove gravity if it somehow worked in all the other right ways and stuff. Yeah. And it also, that's with something that was obviously quite grounded and obviously I imagine gravity is probably the way we figure it out. But like, when we think about life, the amount of times you hear in the news about, um, oh, octopi or uh, octopodes, uh, with octopus, they're, they're so intelligent. They're like, and everything I learn about them more and more, they're just absolutely insane individuals. They're, they're crazy. They can, you know, change their um, colour quicker than like basically anything else apart from like cuttlefish and something else. It's yeah. like they can also change their texture. They've got like, was it three uh, three hearts, I think it is? And yeah. then they've got the brain that's like a donut and it's the, like a soft The brain goes... is essentially the entirety of it because to, cause they control each different sucker each tentacle. over the eight arms and yeah. all that. Yeah, and they've and each the got their own consciousness. nervous system, neurons and all that is necessary for that yeah. level of, kind of communication exactly it's yeah, basically one kind of giant moving brain exactly know? and it's like okay and that's just an octopus right uh, or the plural obviously being yeah. octopi octopodes and it's like we don't understand everything about the octopus we don't understand everything about humans no. in fact i think there was a thing t- two days ago which was um there's a new either organ or some sort of organ tissue that's been discovered. Oh yeah, the largest organ in the body, or something like that. Yeah, I saw the headline of that. I didn't read it. Yeah, I didn't read it either. No. We both <laughs> should have. Yeah. But it's like we're still discovering stuff about the human body because yeah. we are. When it comes to science, we've only had electricity for a hundred years, basically. Yeah. Now we've had the X-ray for what kind of forty, fifty years, or something like that. Yeah, a bit longer than that. It's oh. only been around at least since the thirties. Oh, okay, for kind of medical use, anyway. I see, so, so that's obviously... And now MRI, CT, all of that. Well, uh, as we were talking about getting... earlier, the, the cancer therapy yeah. and all the sort of things. Are funny. What we think about uh, in the thing of 60s and 70s, people used to think smoking was good for you. Yeah. It was actually, it was like, actually, doctors would recommend smoking. Yeah. It's like, what? Well, that's a uh, kind of half-truth. There has been, I mean, as bad as he was, Hitler was entirely against smoking. Okay. There was a Roman, one of the Roman emperors, I can't remember, he might have been Caesar, he was against smoking. There was okay. uh, ancient Greeks that knew that it wasn't good for you. But yeah. Obviously, history is lost and all this and that. Well, that's one, one of the things that I, I, uh, intrigues me when you find out a lot about... Um, I've said this quite a few times on the podcast as well, but the Mayans, for example... Yeah. Um, all these ancient civilizations, they had they so, know, much, so knowledge. much information. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's one The one that blows me away every time is you can look online if uh, people haven't seen it. It's a clay thing, and it's just like... Um, it's in the corner. It's like there's there's two people. Have, the clay thing is basically like two people having a conversation or something, and that's yeah. the main point of it. And just in the background, in the corner, there's a small thing, and it's actually the sun with the planets orbiting around it. Yeah. And all the planets are the right size yeah. and have the right size orbits. Yeah. And it's like we only realize that with Galileo, basically. Yeah. You know, in the I think 1800s. Once we had telescopes. And yeah. That. They somehow knew that, yeah. but prehistory, they yeah. they knew that thousands of years ago, yeah. and they. There's a um the Greeks. They had this uh the Antikythera device. I think right. it is. It was made of brass. It's essentially a uh, clockwork. It um shows the orbits of all the planets that were known to them back then. Right. Uh, back then there was four ancient games: the Olympics and the three others. I can't remember them. Yeah. It, um, it it showed them um different like eclipses and all of that. It basically had twelve different uses or something like that. This one device mm. and it was made three and a half thousand years ago or something like that. That's Clockwork insane. and loads of different gears using pretty advanced mathematics that even I wouldn't understand these days if I read SAT A levels or something <laughs> like that. And it's just madness how people that live in a a mud hut essentially well, can yeah. figure this out without electricity. And Precisely. You yeah. think your phone runs out of power for 20 minutes, you suddenly turn into a caveman. Because <laughs> your knowledge isn't stored in your brain, it's stored in your phone. Yeah, well, that's, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it just blows me away how, like, I can't even fathom how they knew that. And obviously, no. th- there's, there's two, there's three things that it could be. It's, um, which are, that I've heard. Okay, now there's, the first one is either, they did have somehow technology, maybe not electricity, but yeah. like, obviously gears. Well, it could have thing. been a kind of nuclear apocalypse style thing. They well, started over. Precisely. That's yeah. one option where they ha- did have some sort of technology, but yeah. nuclear apocalypse, great flood, anything. Atlantis, for example. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All these things. And it's like, that could have happened. Another option, which is the one that I think is the least feasible, which is aliens. That's which... the one I believe in most of it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I will we'll talk about that in a sec. But um, aliens, and then the other one is um, 
a lot of people talk about like psychedelics and like yeah. um, with you know you go into shamanic rituals of um, tribes throughout history they've taken ayahuasca or smoked this or taken that and they have experiences you know yeah. psychedelics I've throughout history have been used um, in a variety of ways of soul searching finding yourself and knowledge yeah. about other things it's yeah. like so you I'm not saying this is the truth but for we know I know. I think that mines, there's certain evidence to suggest they took mushrooms and stuff. And yeah, whatever. there was definitely some kind of psychological. So, like, if they took mushrooms, stuff say 12,000 years ago, yeah. they took some mushrooms, they all had this group. Like, imagine the community they had there compared to what we have yeah. today. This big group community, they all take these mushrooms and do this big shamanic ritual, and they all focus at the right time with the stars out and stuff. Yeah. And they, obviously, when there's a lot less light pollution, you can see yeah. a lot better what's going on. Exactly. You look out the window here, you can see maybe about 20 stars directly <laughs> yeah. above you. You go somewhere like Iceland, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the middle of nowhere, you can see the entirety of the Milky Way, the yes. entire belt stretching over the sky. Yeah, it's mad. It's I, mean, I, didn't, madness. I annoyingly didn't get to see that because it you was can see a couple of the, um, You can see a couple of nebula as well. You can kind of see them on a good day in Southampton. You can see a couple of nebula and uh, around the Milky Way, I think it's three smaller galaxies. Oh, really? And you can see one or two of those. And on a good night, you can see uh, Andromeda. If oh, you've okay. got a medium-sized telescope, you can actually see Andromeda Galaxy. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's just like... So imagine without any light pollution whatsoever, all you've got is the occasional kind of fire pit or something like that. You haven't got a foley 20 miles away. <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah, with the fucking gases that are... Or just the sheer amount of light that comes off that place that ruins this. I mean, you're stood out in the middle of the New Forest and you can see quite clearly, you can see like... Bournemouth, Foley, Southampton, mm. Ringwood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. Areas. You yeah. can just see these orange glows in the on the horizon yeah whereas a world where there was no electricity right, and also it's in such a darker place it's also a lot of uh, so much more just by looking up exactly and it's like so many drugs as well make your pupils dilate so yeah. obviously when your pupils dilate you let's a lot more light in so you have mass people taking these drugs looking yeah. up and all that light coming in and the, you, you, we couldn't we don't know what they could have seen what they could have felt but with, with the aliens thing let's um do about that a small amount because my, my thing with aliens i've, I've heard quite a bit about like aliens potentially coming down because there's yeah. the there's one thing which is in history which a lot of people there's a lot of debate over which is how uh, basically the monkey brain accelerated so much and became yeah. uh, close to the human brain and one of the ideas I mean I'm not saying this could be one it could be as usual I think maybe everything is a combination maybe all religions put together maybe all spirituality put together or science put together can make the answer to the universe but with that it's there's the I think stoned ape theory or stoned monkey theory which is um they basically ate mushrooms and then because they ate these psycho psychedelic mushrooms mm. and they didn't know they had these crazy experiences in their their monkey brains and yeah. they basically expanded their horizons and that potentially helped speed up human uh, evolution because I think in the a, beginning of language was yeah. one of the things that uh, properly sped up human evolution mm. yeah uh, whereas with um, some people believe you know it could be a combination of that as well as aliens it could yeah. be I mean, I'm I mean the saying, opening scenes of Prometheus that's kind of the starting Just, off of yeah because yeah. uh, people think we evolved from apes yeah we obviously didn't we, it was we it's the common ancestor yeah that's... the common the missing link yeah. is what we and apes evolved from we're just yeah. one divergent path of it so we don't know what that missing link is yeah and I describe it in where a terrible way pops into it and all that you can't really argue with that because we don't have any evidence yeah. at the moment but yeah there's that missing link and that could be an ancient civilization from somewhere else has yeah. travelled here because like I say, we need to leave this planet at some point. Mm. And uh, so if we manage to get to that point before we nuke each other, we might one day be able to start up new civilizations from different planets. Yeah, and yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's madness. Because the, the different stuff we can grow in Petri dishes these days, oh, I'm sure yeah. if we put our minds to it, we can create an entirely new genus of life. Well, we're trying to create AI as well, aren't we? That's yeah. kind of, I know that's not necessarily the same thing, but if we create... Well, we need to understand the intelligence. Well, have you seen to, Westworld? Uh, bits. Oh, okay, I'd really recommend that watching that. It's a fantastic series, but they basically make biological, they make AI, but yeah. it's biological. So yeah. they, and it's like, well, how do we know for argument's sake, you know, as I don't really believe we this, but it's evolved a, from that. Sort yeah, of thing. Or, or yeah, you could have aliens that have um, come down, they've kind of created their own artificial life stuff that's yeah. kind of mated with humans, as you say, or combined with them in some way yeah. and made what we are, which is this weird imperfect thing because like yeah. as i said i want to reiterate the amount of breeds of dog that humans have created from, well, from wolves yeah uh, it's all for, like every species of dog yeah. and coyote, so or coyote it's from wolves it's not such far-fetched theory that uh, an ancient 
civilization that can travel across the universe yeah. would not be able to do that with us and some kind of yeah. uh, primates type kind of creature is it exactly and also people think um, like one of the arguments is obviously how come we've never seen them how come we've never done this but it's also they would, like they wouldn't want to interfere with the evolution of them, exactly it's just yeah. observing if their technology is so much more advanced than ours like how like how easy is it for us like i know we have uh, it's been a little bit not quite the same but like us to spy on people like uh, aboriginal tribes and stuff yeah. never seen any technology and yeah. maybe there's a little thing they see for a second but they just forget or yeah. you could if their technology is so good stealth yeah. stealth stealth aircraft yeah you can't see them on radar so why would we be able to see their thing which is even beyond yeah. that exactly yeah. telescopes like, can see a blurry star yeah they're not gonna be able to see an entire kind of alien armada out there and if they're keeping an eye on us seeing all of the uh the technology yeah. that we sort of they would know doing. where telescopes are pointing at as well yeah, they know... They, they could be one of bears everything. orbiting around us that's entirely stealth. We'd have no idea of it. Yeah, precisely. They could just yeah. be watching us and seeing where what we do, what we just do. Just need to understand gravity a bit more and then we'll be able to find it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it. It's one of those... It's it's such an interesting sort of thought experiment. That's what I kind of like doing. It's just pondering all these things. Because it's knowing... Knowing the answer this wouldn't necessarily bring me, for example, any... It wouldn't change my life necessarily, but it's yeah. really... It's cool to think about all these possibilities and not being closed off to anything. Mm. And I want to reiterate to people with the whole... Um, the monkey thing I said, with the stoned ape theory, and uh, what I meant was, as you clearly pointed out, because I don't want to misinform people, I evolution isn't monkeys became humans. Yeah. It is there was a, an animal... And then what happened is over evolu- as evolution happened over years and years and years and years, years it basically split off into yeah. the, the Homo sort of, as in Homo erectus, that eventually became yeah. Homo sapien, that sort of thing that came off to become human. And then the other sort of all the tree, apes and which all is that. all the apes and yeah. stuff. And obviously from the apes then became there's obviously there's ape we're the apes as well. But like there's all the different I'm doing it with my hands, which no one can see. But <laughs> it's like the tree of life. It's, yeah. it's that's how it is. It's you you can trace things back. We were, I think it was. Uh, four hundred thousand. No, it was somewhat ridiculously. Maybe it's. I'm, I'm, I don't know the number, so I'm not even going to try. But it's like uh, eventually people say that we related to lobsters. Yeah, because well, essentially we came from the ocean. Saw it on QI, we were we are essentially starfish. Yeah, <laughs> kind but, of four billion years ago or something like that. We yeah. essentially evolved from starfish. Yeah, you go and back far really enough, are. and everything came from a central point, and then that yeah. split and split and split and split and split. And it's like with every animal on Earth, once again, potentially linking back with my thing of um. The, the universal consciousness yeah. it's the we we came from the same initial like almost one celled organism yeah I mean how is it that... the beginning bit of life everything yeah. has evolved from that yeah so everything it's like that everything ever lived and ever will yeah, it's come from, from that, that one single cell. Precisely. And it's like, well, if if we all came from that, both us, dogs, cats, praying mantis, jellyfish, everything, it's like, who's to say there isn't some degree of universal consciousness between us all yeah. that came from that one cell? So I think know? kind of we're 98% kind of genetically similar to cabbage or something mm. like that. So. I think bananas were really similar to as well. Yeah. It's just things like that. And it's just like, <laughs> okay, but it's it's still life you know plants yeah. I mean fruit is just the blossom essentially and it's fruit the seed a, essentially yeah. Really, isn't it yeah because that's what it's, it's basically and it tastes good so that it gets spread across you yeah. know if it tasted if it tasted really bad no one would eat it and then poop it out and so it could get planted yeah. anyway you know it's it's crazy but we've come to the, the two hour mark um, has it really so been two hours it's, it's amazing time does fly when you're chatting shit <laughs> that's it that's it mate um I mean, I'd love to have you on again, and we can maybe um, in the coming months or something, we'll plan something and write a few things down, and then yeah, we'll kind I'll of actually hit, research what I'm going to say. Yeah, hit the ground <laughs> running. Well, it's just my podcast is still in early days. I mean, I've I've released 25 episodes. Well, it's it's on episode 19, I think, but yeah. so uh, quite a few two parters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and some are two parters where like I, I I generally try and release them for about an hour ish um, yeah. at a time, um, about once a week. Um, but I'd I'd happily um, just bring you on. We'll figure something out and just I'll write down like five topics or something because yeah, very yeah. easily just go off about yeah, everything else. Other. But I think I'll bring just, my laptop around as well, so I can kind of oh, that'd be cool. Research yeah. things. That'll be good. That'll be good. Um, it's getting later, and only because we've now kind of come to an impasse. It's like, well, we can either continue going on about something else, or yeah. so I'll just say for now because it's a nice, easy going two hour mark. What I'll say is. Um, probably end it around here yeah it's been good it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here jack it's been awesome yeah i'll definitely have to have you on again and we'll talk about our crazy theories about life and that sort of jazz it's uh (laughs) fantastic thank you very much no worries
And that's the end of part two. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. Um, next week um, should be the release of the Father's Day special episode that I've been uh, kind of subtly planning. I think I only mentioned it very briefly last week. Um, essentially, me and my brother Rob, um, we're going to sit down and chat for, I don't know how long, um, about Dad. Um, as I said, in this chat, both part one and part two, me and Jack do likely speak about our dads passing away and, and my dad died of um, esophageal cancer when I was 19 and I'm currently 24 so it was almost five years ago so it was five years ago and a couple of weeks ago so it was almost five years to the date and I just thought I've spoken about it in the podcast a fair amount um, with different people to different lengths of it and stuff so I thought it'd be quite good to have one episode where I just explain sort of what happened what he was diagnosed with how his sort of condition got worse and things like that so it's not going to be obviously a ridiculously happy episode <clears throat> or anything like that um i don't know how informal it will be um obviously it would just be chatting with my brother so i imagine it'd be quite informal in that sense but more how heavy hitting it's going to be and that sort of thing obviously it's not going to be the aim but we're just going to talk about it openly and see where the conversation sort of goes and just kind of i'll have some light guide points of just kind of speaking about his condition and what happened essentially um not just for people listening to this podcast have a better insight into my life but obviously that can help with certain other um, things i talk about and certain insight i may have but also to really help people who are either going through something like this or have been through things like this or at least people have an idea of what to expect, what it's like, um, how families react, all these sorts of things. So it might be quite helpful for some people. It's probably going to be quite therapeutic for my brother and I. So that's going to be uh, next week's episode. Um, however long it is, I'll just release it like that. I'm not going to do any cuts between it. I'm not going to do any um, promos for it or anything like that. I imagine the intro will be quite short. So that'll be the thing that will be released next week. Uh, for the fathers for Father's Day, which falls on a Sunday, and obviously I release these episodes on Sundays, so that we then uh, obviously if you're American, then you have Father's Day on a different day, and I can't remember exactly when that is, but we have it first. So there we are. Um, I think that's it for now. Really, there's not really anything else to add to this podcast. I haven't got any specific ones added to the future sort of list yet. I think after the one with Rob, I'll be releasing another Science but Simple with Josh. Um, I've got planned an episode I'll be recording with Wayne and Josh. Um, Wayne is the paleontologist and also the author um, who has written a couple of books and he's actually in the midst of writing some more uh, and he's also a paleontologist so we had a, a couple of episodes ago there's two parts one which is just mentioned about me like beginner's guide to paleontology or something like that uh, and then the other one is um, about sort of the uh, the human condition good and evil that whole sort of idea of it so he'll be on a future episode um, i've got a couple other friends of mine who are going to be on hopefully and um, there's one who's a homosexual man and he's going to be talking about um sort of coming out how the world has treated him like him being gay when he was younger because he's a bit older than i am and that sort of thing so they're the kind of things i've got on the pipeline at the moment um i'm currently in talks with a few other people and, and bands and that sort of stuff trying to sort that as well so yeah nothing 100 percent concrete yet just a few things that are being planned hopefully by next week and the week after i'll have a better idea of what i'm doing but yeah that's basically the end of my post show ramble um thanks as always for tuning in guys um be sure to you know like us and follow us on instagram twitter and facebook you can contact us in any way um those are all listed in the details um, both on social media and also the wherever you listen to the podcasts um review us on itunes if you feel like it deserves it um obviously if you think it deserves a one star review then i'd probably be more inclined to say you can you know leave that one out but you know you want to have well and have honesty um so yeah thanks as always for tuning in guys and i'll talk to you next week